I almost died from food that was poisoned. Who's the main suspect? My mother. I never understood why my mom was such a mess. I never knew my father, since my mom wasn't married to him. As a child, we just bounced around from rental apartment to the next, with my mom desperate to find someone who will cover all our expenses. She wasn't really one for work, but she did what she had to until she met my current stepdad, who is the nicest guy ever. They got married when I was 15, which is five years ago, and he has treated us so well ever since. Anyways, five months ago I met my boyfriend, Chuck. It was in college, and Chuck may not be wealthy and struggles at college, but he's quite handsome and he has a heart of gold. Even though we only dated for a few months, he was intending on getting engaged soon since he comes from a relatively conservative family. Even though I was very happy during these five months, my mom really wasn't. For some reason, she did not like Chuck at all. Every time we would go out, she would give him a side eye, and she never wanted him over after the first time he visited. Even though <laughs> he did absolutely nothing wrong. I remember the worst one was when me and her accidentally ran into Chuck in the mall and she just jokingly made fun of his clothes and his hair and interrupted the conversation to leave. I don't have a job and can't afford to live on my own, so I have to live with her and my stepdad until I graduate. The fights with mom just got worse and worse. One time, I was on the phone with Chuck and forgot to pick up her dry cleaning before a relative's wedding, and she could not get the dress in time. That day, she literally kicked me out of the house, and I had to go stay with a friend for the night. She blamed Chuck and the fact that I was distracted by him on the phone, and that I forgot to pick up the dress. After I returned, she even gave me a curfew and told me never to return after 9pm if I was with him. Another time, my semester results had just came out. Even though I was a straight-A student, I had a C. This freaked her out and she went on about how Chuck is a failure and how he's making me a failure like him. And how if we stayed like this, I'd keep stooping to his level and eventually fail. This put such pressure and stress on me that I couldn't even study that well anymore without it having it being in the back of my mind. She told me if I did not get straight A's next semester, she would go to Chuck himself and threaten him never to speak with me again. Between all these fights were the occasional yelling if I was on the phone, making up excuses about me not being able to go out because we had to run an errand, or do something else in the house, and even hiding my keys or purse if I'm about to go out. I never told her that Chuck was planning on proposing and getting married soon, because I knew that she would just freak out. One time, I tried to talk to my stepdad about this. I told him how I did not understand why she was being like this and that I just wanted her to be happy for me. He told me that when a mother and daughter go through so much together alone, the mother will have a harder time letting go of her daughter to someone else. I asked him if she had told him anything about me or Chuck, and he said that she just disapproved. I could not keep the marriage secret for so long, and I told him that Chuck was planning on marrying me, and that even if I don't have mom's blessing, I wanted his. He told me that mom would be furious, but he would be glad to walk me down the aisle. Another four months passed in the exact same happening so often. This time, I had my stepdad on my side, as we had finally bonded over something. I felt what it was like to have a father for the first time. I had to play the long game, so I started being more secretive about what I was doing or where I was. However, all this culminated into a massive crisis. A month ago, I was out with Chuck for dinner. I told mom beforehand and she asked me which restaurant. As soon as I told her the name of the restaurant, she ranted about how it was cheap. <laughs> 
and a bad restaurant and that I would hate it and may even get sick. I told her I did not care and I just wanted to have a nice night regardless of the money or place. I told her that I might be a little late, but that Chuck's dad will give us a ride back home because he would be in the area visiting some friends. As soon as I told her that, her eyes widened and her expression shifted. Just as she was about to go on another rant, my stepdad stepped in and told her to relax and just let us go. It was the perfect night, and Chuck's dad really did give us a ride back home. It was the first time I've met him, so I was a little nervous, but he was a really nice guy. He asked me about college and my future plans and just came off as a really caring father throughout the entire ride. Once we reached the house, he went quiet for a little bit as my mom was standing on the porch waiting for me to arrive. Ah. He asked me if that was my mom and I said yes. And then he just gave me a cold goodbye and left. I found the whole thing very strange. As soon as I entered through the door, my mom had a look on her face as if she'd seen a ghost. She did not talk much and did not even yell or argue about something random that happened while I was out like she always does. She just asked me how everything went and that's it. I was confused but curious. I asked her if something was wrong and she just brushed it off. I went to my room to change and then she came up and gave me a bowl of granola. She told me it was fresh and she just mixed it herself with various oats, dried fruits, and of course peanuts. I told her, I'm not really hungry, but she kept insisting to a scary degree, telling me that I must try it. Eventually, I caved and I tried some of it and told her it was good. As I was eating, I could swear I saw her shed a tear. I thought it was about the whole Chuck thing, and I remembered what my stepdad said. So I just tried to comfort her, telling her that I would never really go away and would always be there for her, even if I was with someone else. She wiped away her tears and left the room. A couple hours later, I started feeling really funny. I found it hard to breathe and I passed out. All I remember afterward was waking up in a hospital bed. I had no idea what was happening or why I was there, but I felt awful and my chest was hurting. I kept losing consciousness and waking up again several times until a doctor finally came in and added something to my IV. It made the fainting stop. I could finally stay awake for a few hours. My stepdad was the first one to come into the room and he just sat by me and kept comforting me and hugging me. I felt so much better when I saw him, but I was waiting for my mom. I asked him where mom was and he told me she was just scared and in shock. So it was best that he came in first to check on me. After my stepdad and my grandma came in, it's been years since I saw her because she was living in another state. I was so happy to finally see her again, but my mom was nowhere to be found. The doctor came in and told us that I could leave, but I'd have to rest in bed for at least a week. When we asked what was wrong, he told us they were not sure, but the results would come back in a couple days and be sent to us, and that I've come in for a checkup then. What I found even stranger was how Chuck did not visit or call. I went home that day to find my mom there. She was sitting there on her chair looking mortified. I expected her to get up and hug me or be happy as soon as she saw me, but she wasn't. She just looked at me with tears in her eyes and that's it. She did not even say a word. I tried to go to her, but my stepdad told me to go upstairs and rest. As I was up there, I heard him and grandmother yelling downstairs, scolding her for not having come to the hospital. Strangely, I did not hear her say anything back. The next day, as soon as I woke up, went downstairs to see my mother, all her silence was over and she erupted in anger. She yelled at me about how it was a cheap restaurant's food that was the reason, 
and how it ultimately was Chuck's fault. I did not understand how could she reach such a conclusion, but she was convinced. She went on about how he was poor and could only afford cheap restaurants and put people in hospitals for goodness sake, and about how if he cared about me, he would have actually came to see me in the hospital, which was ironic since she herself did not stop by. I was too tired to argue, but she did not care. She told me I had to break up with him immediately or I would be kicked out of the house. I was crying and waiting for someone to come in, and my stepdad finally entered and broke up the fight. He told her how she was overreacting and it wasn't his fault, but she would not budge. She kept saying how if I had died, it would have been Chuck's fault. She told me if I wanted to stay with him, then I'd have to leave and never speak to her again. I was genuinely mad about how something so small could have made her so dramatic. There must have been a reason for this. My grandmother woke up and came downstairs in the middle of all this yelling, fighting, and crying. She was so confused, too. She joined the yelling party until the phone rang. It was the hospital. My stepdad picked up and put it on speakerphone. The doctor told us the results of the blood test and abdominal x-rays came back and they found traces of poison in my system. Our mouths dropped and everyone went silent. Just as my mom was about to say that it was Chuck who poisoned me, the doctor told us the poison traces were found in peanuts that were in my system. My stepdad dropped my phone and everyone looked at my mother in shock. She went dead silent as tears were streaming down my face like a waterfall. It was a crippling silence for about a minute before she started to explain herself. We knew she was guilty as she was stuttering and unable to form a full sentence. All of a sudden, my grandma walked over and slapped her across the face and told her she wants to disown her for what she's done. My stepdad kept clenching his fist before he blew up in anger and shouted and kicked her out of the house in her pajama pants without even letting her take her clothes or anything. Yup, polka dot pajamas. I sat there on the floor, shocked and in tears. I couldn't even speak. I did not know how a mother could ever poison her own daughter and I did not understand why she would ever do this. My stepdad and grandma just kept patting me on the back and hugging me. My grandma told me how her daughter, my mom, was always a failure and always up to no good, which is why they weren't close and lived in different states. But she would have never expected her to do this. I went up to my room and called Chuck, explaining everything to him. I wanted to see him so badly but we remembered that I had to go in for a checkup at the hospital. I told him to meet me there, and I went there with my stepdad and grandma. We expected to not find my mom there, but we were mistaken. We did not talk to her and barely looked her way. We waited outside before entering, and she entered with us. We could not understand her audacity. Just as we were entering, Chuck arrived and got in the doctor's office with us. The doctor reviewed the results of the blood test and x-rays, and then he gave us the biggest surprise yet. He told us that they found that I was two months pregnant. We went out and my stepdad, mom, and grandma froze in shock and stared at me and Chuck. My mom started shouting and yelling about Chuck, cursing me and him before I've had enough and told them that Chuck and I got married in secret three months ago with the blessing of my stepdad. My mom and grandma looked at my stepdad in shame, but he came over to my side and held both of me and Chuck tight, telling them that he cares about us and facilitated everything. My mom was getting more and more furious but we told her that she does not have a say in this anymore and that we never want to see her again. Yeah, no contact. Before she left, however, I asked her why she hated Chuck so much and why she did all this. I need closure. My mom tried explaining the whole thing. 
about 10 years ago, she met Chuck's dad, who was already married to Chuck's mother. The two of them planned to get married and Chuck's dad would leave his wife for her. However, after only a few weeks, Chuck's dad had a change of heart and dumped my mother. Even though Chuck's dad was not rich, he had connections to some very dangerous people and he threatened my mom that if she ever told anyone about them or if that secret ever got out and reached his son or his wife, he would have her killed. She told us about how she lived in fear for years and was mortified when she found out that I was with Chuck. She was scared that his dad would follow up on his promise, if the two families ever got too close. She told us how this whole thing was a reaction to Chuck's dad, not Chuck himself. Chuck was just as shocked about this as us. He went out and called his father immediately. My grandma and stepdad just kept blaming her more and more for her mistakes and how she feared for her own life to the point of sacrificing her daughter for it. I was shaking and crying and I never wanted to see her again. My stepdad told her that he would get a divorce and my grandma told her that she would disown her in front of the whole family like a live stream. Both ours and Chuck's. My mom left the hospital with her head hanging low. Later that day, I made arrangements with Chuck to move in together since now we're officially husband and wife. My stepdad told us that we can have the house and he would rent an apartment. The whole thing was terrifying. I knew I had the support of my soon-to-be former stepdad and grandma, but this did not go how I wanted it to go. I lost my mom and I was about to be a mom at only 20 years old, before even finishing college. I had a very long discussion with Chuck and asked him what his dad said when he called him. He said that he had a huge fight with his father, but his dad apologized and told him that this was all in the past. Still, he felt betrayed by his own dad and he was scared that he turned out to be a dangerous man. I was scared of living this life together, but he reassured me that he would do everything he can to support me and that we would live happily even if our families were complicated. I never heard back from my mom. She got disowned after the incident and her narcissistic personality destroyed our small, sweet family. I don't understand at all how at the end... That reasoning can justify doing this to your daughter. I mean, she tried to kill her with poison. I hope there's an update for this story so we can see if there was any charges put on this mom or if they can prove she did it. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this story. Our next one is an Am I the A-hole? The title is, Am I the A-hole for calling my brother a disgusting gross man at his daughter's birthday party. If you're new to this channel, click that subscribe button as we do daily videos and let's hop into story number two. My brother, Paul, and I, we're not close at all. We have very different worldviews and have incompatible personalities. I can tolerate him, but I would never consider him a friend. He's been married to Lisa for one or two years now, and they have a beautiful daughter together. My girlfriend Amy and I were invited to celebrate my niece's first birthday. Most of the family was invited, and it would be the first time I would have seen them all together. I only see my family once or twice a year, with a few exceptions. Amy and I arrived a little earlier than we were supposed to, and instead of waiting in the car, we decided to go in. The first thing I noticed is how calm my brother seemed to be in contrast to Lisa, who was frantically running up and down. When he saw Amy, he immediately handed the baby over to her and got a beer to sit down and watch some TV. Lisa was clearly struggling and he was consent with a beer in Netflix. I don't want to be rude and maybe this was a one-time thing, but it bothered me how uninvolved he was. He handed Amy a baby with a full diaper with vomit on its clothes. Eventually, Amy, Lisa, and I finished everything. 
The house was clean, the food was ready, and Lisa looked ready to host a big gathering. We all paid zero attention to Paul. When my family arrived, I thought everything was going swell. I avoided Paul and enjoyed speaking to my family. After we had a sit down to eat, Paul approached me, <sighs> drunk, thanking me for helping Lisa. I did not want to be around him for long and moved out of his way. He's very persistent, by the way. I was ignoring him, but he started talking about Amy. Protect Amy like a real man, or you've got a great woman by your side. You know, whatever. It was slightly odd and mildly uncomfortable, but I was able to brush it away. Amy was trying to sober him up a little bit before the cake cutting, so she was selectively hearing. We tried to get him to stop talking and drink water. However, he had a lot to say about Lisa. He was complaining about how pregnancy, quote, ruined Lisa's body and how a baby's ruined his life. Amy and I kept looking at each other awkwardly, and we were soon going to leave him be. We did not leave the conversation soon enough. He was complaining about his sex life, or lack thereof, and commenting on how desperately he wanted to have sex with someone who's fit like Amy. This made the both of us extremely uncomfortable. Amy left and quickly apologized to Lisa. I told him that he was a disgusting, gross man who needs some freaking help before I left. Apparently, this made him super upset and he started wailing at the party like a grown crybaby. Paul told everyone that the reason he was crying was because of my words to him. He got over it quickly, but a few people told me I was wrong to shame a father on his child's birthday. I could have probably left without making a statement. Am I the a-hole? Drop your decision in the comment section below. So, I think this guy's a freaking jerk. I mean, what in the world is wrong with this guy? There was a comment I came across in the original thread, and I agree with it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with it. Here it is. That's really awful. I really do hope Lisa can find her way out of this relationship with him. Your brother already resents a one-year-old baby. And probably Lisa for doing it to him. They're both better off without him around. Yeah, I would have to agree. He does seem like a P.O.S. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this story. Like always, smash that subscribe button so you never miss a daily video. And I hope each and every one of you have a great day. And remember, it's cool to be kind.